this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here comparing the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 edition with the Steel Series Arctic Nova 7 Wireless. Now, these are two quite similar headsets in a number of different ways, and so I wanted to talk about the differences between them, the features, what I like and don't like about both of them, and how they stand up against each other, and obviously give you some views of the two headsets side by side. And talk about more. I'm using the microphone from one of the headsets right now so see if you can guess and let me know in the comments what you think before you get to the end of the video but I'm also going to compare both of them later on and talk about the differences there. You'll see they're both wireless headsets they both have their own dongle set up and they both also have interesting designs. I'm going to start with the Nova 7 which you can see here has quite a flexible headband design that extends from the top and is also tiltable. So one of the things you'll have noticed immediately is you can tilt the ear cup so you can lay it flat, either on you or on a desk. You can also extend the headband and there's a strap design on top as well. It has these soft weave memory foam cushioned ear cups, which I find a bit scratchy, but they do do a good job of delivering nice comfort and a good balance of helping with sound while also not making your head too hot. As you can see, it's also flexible, stretchable and bendable as well. So it should hold up over time and a nice design. Now the Nova 7 is a good headset for a number of different reasons and I would recommend it certainly. It's very adjustable, very comfortable, easy to wear for hours, has really good battery life and highly customizable sound that I'll talk a bit more about later on. I've gone into in-depth on both these headsets on the reviews that I'll link to in the description where we go into the software. So it's well worth checking those out because the software is where both these headsets shine, allowing you to tweak sound even more. But a great headset immediately. Now, when I got the Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 edition, I noticed some similarities. It also has this sort of finish on the ear cups, very similar ear cup design but also a lot of memory foam padding, very lightweight design, very comfortable headband, sits nicely on the head, doesn't nag at your noggin, is very easy to wear and very simple to game with. It's obviously a wireless headset as well. Both headsets also offer both wireless and Bluetooth connectivity, more on that in a second, but you'll see the Razer headset has this large volume wheel on one side, and then you've got a mic mute button, power button and a profile switching button as well so you can switch between different audio profiles with ease and you can customize those in Razer's Synapse software and tweak things there. You'll also see USB-C connectivity for plugging in and charging but this is mainly a wireless headset. You will notice quite a difference in the headband design though. The ear cups aren't tiltable and you can't lay them flat so that might be a complaint for some However, saying that, it is a very extendable headband. It does have a nice stretch to it. it does seem like it would be durable and solid. You can see the difference here between a tiny little skull I've got on my desk and then a massive Pac-Man lamp. And it just got a good stretch to it. So it should fit whether you've got a small head or a big head. And I think the same could be said about both of them. Although I think the Razer might be better for larger heads. The Nova 7 lacks that padding that the Razer headset does on top on the headband but still remains quite comfortable. Now, a bit more about the Nova 7. I want to talk about the flexibility of it because that's where this shines over the Razer headset. You'll see out the box, it has multiple different cables included. You've got a USB-C charging cable in there, but there's also a 3.5mm cable. So you do have the ability to connect up a 3.5mm device, which you don't with the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. That's only wireless and USB-C. So there's a lot more flexibility with the Nova 7. So that's worth considering that if you're thinking about using it on multiple different devices. You'll see that the wireless dongle is a USB-C dongle though. So it's worth noting that is also different. That does mean that it will plug in and connect on switch, for example, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. So you have a lot more options in terms of what you connect to and how whether it's wirelessly or plugged in using Bluetooth and other things. The other bonus of this headset is it uses both Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz, but you can also use them both at the same time if you want to. So you can hear Bluetooth audio or wireless audio from different devices. So you could have your Bluetooth connected to your phone, for example, and then the wireless connected to your PC and game on the PC and listen to music on your phone 
and get both sources at the same time. This is something you can't do with the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. It's one mode or the other. You switch between those. So it's worth noting that because that is quite a big difference between them. And your connectivity is really good in my mind. It gives you a lot of flexibility in what you can do. Also, I was surprised that the USB-C dongle will also plug into your phone and then you can connect wirelessly using that dongle on the Nova 7. So loads of flexibility in what you can do there with this headset. And it's also ticks a lot of boxes in terms of the sound quality. It uses similar design to the Nova Pros, which are fantastic and are my personal preference, although they are a lot more expensive. And yet it's an affordable headset with loads of different connectivity options and lots on offer. Black Shark V2 Pro doesn't look quite as good on paper in terms of connectivity. It has that dongle, which is a large USB-A dongle, gives you a good solid connection via Razer's hyperspeed wireless technology. So you've got that 2.4 gigahertz low latency connection. You'll see there's also an extender cable and the ability to plug in and quick charge. Now this headset has up to 70 hours of battery life and I've actually found that it lasts for absolutely ages before you need to plug it in, which is fantastic. It's also a really good sounding headset, but it is aimed at esports gamers. So it's worth bearing in mind because it doesn't have as good a bass, I don't think, as the Nova 7. But the sound is highly customizable. So again, check out the review to find out more about that. Now it is Bluetooth capable. So you can turn it on with the power button on the left hand side. Then press and hold the profile button on the right hand side to switch it into Bluetooth mode. Put it into Bluetooth pairing mode. And you're meant to be able to pair it with your phone and other devices. I couldn't go to pair to my phone, weirdly, but it would pair to my PC. So it is possible, but maybe you might have issues. I'm going to see if I can find a solution to this because it wasn't ideal, but my phone didn't recognize it as a Bluetooth option. Again, you can't do both at the same time, though. It's one mode or the other with this headset, so that is a shame. But it does deliver in a few other areas. And it is fantastic in terms of the mic quality, so stick around to hear the microphone later on. I did actually manage to get the Black Shark V2 Pro to work with an older Pixel 4a, or it wouldn't work with my Pixel 7, so you might not have any issues, but I thought it was worth noting anyway. Now you put the two headsets side by side, and you'll see some of the similarities. This is the main reason why I wanted to compare them, because those ear cups, for example, are very similar. They both have some good cushioning on them, but they both use this material which is not too hot, so it doesn't make your ears too hot. It's not faux leather or anything like that, so it doesn't perfectly block out sound, but you do have some pretty good passive noise cancellation with both of them. I'd say they're the same size or very similar size and depth. You'll see the razor is maybe a bit longer top to bottom, but generally speaking, otherwise, they have a similar feel when you're wearing them on the head. You can see the depth is about the same. I do think that they are a little bit scratchy, though. On both headsets, I found the ear cups to be a little bit scratchy, not super comfortable. But this is going to be a personal preference. The advantage is you don't get hot over time, though, because they are breathable. So in the hotter months in the summer, you might not find you have a problem in terms of getting already sweaty ears or uncomfortable that way. So a look at the Nova 7 controls, you'll see multiple different things on here. You've got volume wheels on both sides, but one is for a chat game balance. So you can dial more to hear more of the game or more of your friends talking. On the right hand side, you'll see separate buttons for connecting Bluetooth and the wireless so pairing it on and turn it into bluetooth mode you'll notice different indicators flashing the led indicator on there also lets you know when it's running low on battery so it will go yellow and red when it's running low and you need to charge it in both headsets do have a fast charge technology in them though so you plug in for a little while and you can get quite a few hours of extra charge in a matter of minutes so it's worth noting that it's pretty decent and also you have a mic mute button on the left hand side now one thing of note is you do get an audible cue on the SteelSeries headset to let you know when the mic's muted. You don't seem to get that on the Razer headset, so you can mute your microphone. You don't really know. Also, as default, there's no side tone, so you need to go in and turn that on. Both headsets I'd recommend using the software SteelSeries GG or Razer Synapse to adjust the microphones, turn on side tone, and tweak the audio to your preference. Out of the box, the Razer headset has far less buttons on it, less customization at hardware level, but as software you can really tweak a few things. The microphone is detachable here, and then you can see it's got a 3.5mm connection. It also has a design on it that basically means you can't plug it in the wrong way around. So there's a couple of notches in there, 
you have to put it into the right position to be able to plug it in. And this is designed on purpose because the mic is designed to only pick up your voice audio from one direction. And there's actually a little marker on the microphone to let you know that direction. So you see you've got it right around. This is designed to eliminate background noise. So as standard at hardware level, it's built to give you good quality sound and eliminate background noise. But you can also tweak the sound of the microphone, choosing from broadcast settings, using noise gate, voice normalization, and other things in Razer's Synap software. So you can really customize the audio of it. The Nova 7, by comparison, has a mic that tucks away into the ear cup. And I'll let you hear a mic test of both of them, but it's not removable. But it does disappear right into the ear cup. So you might have seen from some of the earlier shots, you can barely see it when it's not extended. It's not as nice looking and it isn't as capable but it is fairly decent so it does work quite well so they're both pretty awesome headsets as you can see from here but now for a mic test because that's going to be a big selling point for a lot of people and if you guessed that i was using the black shark v2 pro for the voiceover you're correct because here i am and this is how i've been the whole time and now you can see the sign up software let's get a quick look at that i've gone into a lot more depth on all the different things on this in the reviews i recommend checking that out the mic sounds are really fantastic as standard you can tweak a number of things in here including the equalizer settings so it's currently set to broadcast mode but in default it sounds really good too then you have an option to do a noise gate volume normalization vocal clarity and noise cancelization so if you find it's picking up a lot of background noise you can do that you can turn on side tone in here as well which is not on by default so i would recommend it and you can really tweak the sound of it. This is a great sounding headset, which has lots of different options. I did find, however, that it doesn't have as much bass as I'd like, but it is designed for eSports gamers. So it's actually designed with a soundscape which allows you to pick up the sound of things like footsteps and the noise of enemy movement more than anything else. You can see this if you go into the stereo settings, eSports mode. You see Apex Legends, Call of Duty, CSGO, Fortnite and Valorant. And there's settings in here specifically where footsteps have been tweaked so you can hear more of those than other things, especially for Call of Duty and those games where it's important. But you also have standard sound settings with game, movie and music modes and then THX spatial audio. And you can also set on a game by game basis which of these launch or you can just press the button on the profiles to just switch between them but most importantly a really good sounding microphone fantastic quality you do have a windshield included in the box that you can add on to it which is probably pretty important because it does pick up a fair amount of mouth wind in my experience but now onto the nova 7s and here i am with the steel series nova 7 now you'll hear the quality of this sounds a little bit compressed and not the best not as good as an external microphone but not bad for a retractable one and there are a number of different sound settings that you can go through in SteelSeries GG and this is SteelSeries Sonar and again I've gone into depth on this on the review so I'd recommend checking that out but there are loads of different settings in here that you can customize not just for your microphone but also for the game audio but I'll get to that in a second but you can see we've got things like clearcast AI noise cancellation you can put on a noise gate setting got noise reduction for background noise compressor settings and other things in here that you can tweak you can customize all of that you can choose for a deep voice or a balanced voice or broadcast quality high-pitched nasal and other things so we can set all sorts of different settings in here and you can test it and tweak it and it's this customization that carries through into other things and one of the reasons why the nova 7 and the nova pros are fantastic because you can also see if we go into the game settings that we have configuration options for a variety of different games there's actually loads in here as well so if we look at rainbow six siege for example you'll see that there's settings in here and it highlights elements of it so it's eq settings essentially for different bits of the range of audio but what this does is it highlights certain sounds like footstep sounds and other things and you can see that you can also tweak it so you can turn on spatial audio settings and you can adjust for smart volume there's all sorts of things that are around in here that you can play around with and test but you obviously have specifically tuned things for various different games designed to make the most of those so for competitive gaming 
this is a very flexible thing. The thing I also liked about it is you can also choose your chat audio. So let's say people are talking to you on Discord, you can actually clean their up as well. So you can use AI noise cancellation on incoming voice chat sound. So if your friends have a terrible microphone, you can actually use this on their to then eliminate some of their noise and make them sound better. You can actually choose sound settings to make them clearer, deep voice, less nasal. You can apply a background noise cancellation and other things to your friends. So it's pretty powerful. So a very powerful tool there. That said, this headset obviously hasn't got as good a microphone as the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro. So if you're looking for a mic particularly, then that headset is the better option. Which of these headsets is best for you is really going to be a personal preference. Do you want more connectivity with the SteelSeries headset, for example, or do you want the better sounding microphone? I really think they're both great for their own right. They're both fantastic in their own right. I personally would go for the Nova 7s, but if there's not much in it in terms of price and you know you prefer one way or the other, then you, the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro is a great choice as well. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the reviews to find out more about both these headsets. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.